Red Bull just released their RB20 and by popular demand, we're going to do a quick analysis video of what features look like they could be potentially new and real on the car. Now, the reason why this is just going to be a, a quick analysis video, apart from the fact that recent Red Bull launches have obviously brought about some healthy skepticism uh, for whether or not their cars are real, is that they've gone to great efforts to obscure what's going on at the front of their bodywork. So we're going to have to piece together what's going on there by a little bit of evidence and a lot of speculation. There's also things like the front wing, where front wings are relatively easy to swap. This front wing may or may not be real. Red Bull historically runs quite bland front wings on this set of regulations. Uh, but even if it was real, there's not really anything to talk about on there. The floor edge rearwards is also covered by a protective cover, so we can't see what's going on there. So really, what we're going to be talking about in this video is this upper rearwards bodywork that we can get a good look at, and looking at this sort of side pod area and discussing what could potentially be going on there and why they'd be doing this. Now this video comes with my usual disclaimer of aerodynamicists can't actually fully predict flows, but also a bonus disclaimer of we're doing a lot of speculation in this video. So firstly, looking at the evidence available to us, we do have one shot of a Red Bull on track uh, that's been taken sort of from a, a video of it running around, uh, and we can use that to compare to our launch photos of the car at release. Now from these photos, you can see features like this sort of inlet area look like they're quite similar between track. In fact, even things like the front wing don't look too far off between the track and the model that was presented and the likelihood of them being the same is actually relatively high. There's also a clear correlation between this rearward bodywork area here, and the rear wing looks to be the same spec as well. Now, getting to the side pod inlet is where the conflicting information starts to occur, where we have on a rendered model that was released by Red Bull, we have this narrow letterbox inlet with no inlets down the side. On the physical model, in quite a few shots, it's been pretty obvious that there's a slot type inlet of sorts in here, and then from the side shot, we've got this weird line down the carbon just here um, that's hard to tell exactly what the geometry around this inlet is. But it's safe to say there is some sort of vertical slot. And so what I'm going to run the assumption on is, is that that vertical slot by itself isn't going to be enough to cool the whole car. It's not that much bigger than the slot that's on the, the Ferrari in that sort of region. So I reckon the best guess is that they're probably running a horizontal letterbox inlet just tucked in under here in this region here and they're also combining that with the letterbox slot. Now why would they be doing this setup? Well I mean for a start it allows you to achieve all your desired cooling area here. I talk about the geometrical freedoms of this letterbox slot in my Ferrari video from last year so check that out if you want some more explanation there. So now that we've established what geometry I think is going on under there in terms of the, the cooling, let's talk about how this is all going to work aerodynamically and what they're actually going to be doing with it. Now, the obvious comparison that a lot of people are probably going to draw is the comparison to the Mercedes situation of old, where basically Mercedes had uh, this wing sitting over the top where the side impact structure would more or less be, and then they had the side pot inlet below it there, whether that was in the, the original version going to the floor or the later versions that came higher up like this. Now, Red Bull is actually quite distinct from this approach in a number of ways. I don't really think that it's quite the same in terms of how they're managing it. For a start, everything is all merged into the side pod, and we'll go into this in a little bit more detail later. The, you've got a smooth panel across the whole thing, whereas the Mercedes one was typically more of a detached wing style. It did start to merge a bit, into the side pod rearwards, but it, it still fundamentally had a detached free tip wing on it. You also see a very different geometrical distribution of where the inlet is on the Mercedes, where obviously you actually have quite a bulky inlet out here, whereas Red Bull is really sort of cutting it so that it sits up and then stays down the inside. So that's the main difference between the Red Bull approach here and the Mercedes approach. So now let's talk about what they could actually be doing with this particular geometry. Well, the first thing that I really note is, is that this whole edge around here is actually quite thick and gently rounded. And that to me tells me that they were trying quite hard to not actually roll up any sort of powerful shed vorticity off this edge. If you wanted to roll up vorticity off this edge, you would sharpen it out. Now, obviously there are some rules restrictions here, so you couldn't just go completely nuts with the radius, but the Mercedes style approach has previously shown you can get more vorticity off that edge with a free shedding edge and even previous years Red Bull had more radical edges here. This is quite soft. 
So that to me tells me that they're trying to keep this whole area clean and they're just primarily trying to get a lot of pressurization here, but also they're trying to get that clean flow of air, pick up a nice clean flow of air here and really maximize the clean airflow that's coming over the top of the side pod. So then let's talk about the aerodynamic intent of being shaped like this around the inlet. Well, we spoke about in the Mercedes video about how lifting up this edge here is going to increase the effective angle of attack of this region of the side pod, and that's gonna give you more pressure in this region here. However, one thing I neglected to mention in that video was the fact that you could theoretically shift this pressure region around by moving this entire face laterally. So if we have pressure here and we move this whole face laterally but maintain a lot of the curvature, we would move the pressure laterally as well. So in the Mercedes situation, we obviously have a side pod inlet that looks a little bit like this, that's detached from the wall for a fair amount, and that would have actually moved this whole surface outwards. Now, by doing that, that would have moved the pressure outwards, and having that pressure further outwards may be beneficial in terms of managing the tire wake. It is worth noting, however, that unlike the Mercedes setup, the Red Bull setup does not go the full way forward. The Mercedes setup would come out here and then have a shape more like this, whereas Red Bull is obviously cut back to this region here. Now to an extent that would have meant that a lot of this curvature under the side pod they probably could have retained from their previous year's concept where in the previous year they obviously had that that undercut lip that went up like this and basically what they've done is they've just chopped that off and pulled this particular portion of the side pod back to here and that's probably not too dissimilar to what it was on last year's car. In fact, if we look at this shot of the side pod side by side between last year's side pod and this year's, you can actually see just how similar that curvature is under there. So they've been able to retain a lot of that curvature and basically what they've done is they've just swapped this lip around so this lip is now on the top instead of down the bottom. So why has Red Bull shifted to this setup then? Why not stick with the old style setup? Well, I think that there's a few potential reasons going on here. One is, is that perhaps this gives a uh, slightly better airflow over the top of the side pod, although I would be quite surprised if that's the case because this top edge here on the old side pod should still be getting pretty clean airflow, but maybe they can get slightly better uh, airflow around this softer lip. Maybe they got a slight cleanup over the top. That could have been a reason. Another one could have been that when combined with this inlet along here and this one here, they were able to actually just get more pressure in general in this region. Once you cap almost this, this whole top area with this lip up here, you're gonna take all that high pressure from the front of your inlets and you're gonna basically block it in this area. So you're gonna get all that high pressure in this region. And so that might just increase the amount of pressure they have overall in this area, much like we talked about last night with the Mercedes setup. Whereas on last year, whilst they had a huge section here that could generate pressure, they were losing the ability of the actual cooling inlet to generate pressure down low, which if we're trying to get maximum amount of pressure in this region to, to maximize the outwash of the front wheel wake, then perhaps there's a benefit to moving the cooling inlet below the lip. Then of course, there's the outboard shift of pressurization we were talking about earlier, where we can move this sideways and get that pressure sideways. And also the fact that, as I speculated in the Ferrari video a while back, this vertical inlet here would bleed in some of the boundary layer that's running alongside the mono. That boundary layer as previously discussed would of course result in reduced cooling performance because you'd have less energy at the inlet of the cooling. However, it might clean up the flows through this undercut region here, which go around to the floor at the back, and that could be quite an advantage. Now moving on to the upper bodywork here, Red Bull has very much gone for a setup that reminds me of the previous Mercedes. What we have is we have uh, two sort of lumps on either side of the, the main section of the bodywork that follow the back edge of the halo, and then they go into quite a steep downwashing section at the rear. I'm gonna use the renders to show you just what that looks like. So you can see that's the back of the halo, and this is this sort of lumpy sausage coming back here. Uh, and then you've got obviously this lower region just next to the, the main sort of shark fin region and the, the roll hoop. Again, this is a setup that, that is much like what Mercedes ran last year. Now, what could this setup be potentially doing? Well, off the back of this halo, you're going to have some losses. So there'll be some losses off the halo here and they've filled in the back of here. So that might be helping to control the halo losses there, but 
you wouldn't need to continue the sausage the whole way down the length of the engine cover if it was just to suppress those halo losses. You could taper it out as you went further rearwards. However, there's also losses coming out of the cockpit and these losses probably stream along here and this sausage may keep the losses contained within the sort of valley along here and keep it tight to the bodywork. And that may be helpful for stopping them from drifting off either side, whether that's working their way down to the beam wing and diffuser or whether that's just clipping a portion of the rear wing on the, the end plates perhaps in certain conditions. It's obviously very hard to predict these flows, but that's what these sausage bits could be doing. And there's just a shot here showing you how extreme that cut down and in is of the sausages right at the back of the car. While we're back here, you'll also note that it's running that detached rear wing second element, uh, which I discussed at length in the Mercedes video last night, so feel free to check that out. And that's my quick initial analysis of the RB20. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Leave a comment below on whether or not this video style works for you. And hopefully I'll see you next time.